really happy to be here, really excited to show you. Uh, we're going to be showing Dynamic Fire in Star Engine. So Dynamic Fire is a driver uh, for gameplay in both FPS and multi-crew experiences. It creates emergent sandbox gameplay and it can be used by designers to craft very dangerous scenarios for players. And as you can see from the video, it gets very intense. Okay, so how do fires start in Star Engine? Well, there needs to be a source of ignition and there are multiple ways in which it can occur. For example, weapon impacts or misfires, explosions or damaged items, and the player needs to be alert to their surroundings with fire and ever-present threat. If a fire does break out, you're gonna see it dynamically propagate through the area, uh, causing damage to environment and player. And at this point, the player needs to limit the damage, of course, by extinguishing the fire uh, in any way that they can. So when doing so, they're going to need to wear protective clothing to protect them from extreme heat. They're going to need to wear a closed helmet to protect them from smoke inhalation, poor oxygen levels. Man, that, that is interesting. So number one, you need protective clothing and you need to make sure you have a helmet so you don't inhale the smoke as well. The level of detail in this game is just insane, man. When you couple this up with the upcoming engineering gameplay, it's going to be very important to have all the necessary gear on your ship and make sure that your crew members are properly trained on how to handle these situations like fires. You know, this is really interesting, man. This is going to add a lot of depth to the game. Honestly, I'm really excited for it. And there's actually multiple ways the fire can be extinguished, including the removal of heat. Uh, for example, using the fire extinguisher, which is my personal favorite. It's a lot of fun doing that. Uh, the removal of oxygen, for example, locking off the area, venting the oxygen, creating a vacuum. Or simply the fire's burned so fiercely that it's, it's done everything it needed to do. It is nothing left for it to destroy. And if you let it get this bad, it's probably time to consider repairing your ship. Okay, so how do we achieve this from the technical perspective? Well, the first thing the artists and designers do is they mark up their scene to tell us what physical properties that each surface is made from, whether it's wood or metal. But not only on the surface, we have to de describe what is behind the surface. You might see a metal panel on your spaceship, but has it got cladding or wiring behind it? It's important we know all this so we know how flammable it is. Then after this, we have to define all the physical properties that go with these surfaces. So, for example, where, where the mass is, the energy density, combustion temperature, air fuel ratio. And we use all these physical properties and we sum them up in each voxel, which is a one by one meter cube. And then once we have these voxels, this forms the basis of our simulation. Uh, so then as we, first thing we do is we look for sources of ignition and then we're off. So here's our debug mode that shows us what was going on in the simulation and is what we use to track it. And you can see these squares enlarging to show us where the fire is spreading. For each of these voxels, we're tracking the fire, the temperature, fuel remaining, the amount of smoke, and the fire is propagating via convection and radiation, which are both accurately simulated. And it's consuming the gases and producing the knock-on products as well as it goes. And because we're using a proper simulation, like Mike mentioned, when you vent a room, not only are you removing the oxygen and putting the fire out, but if the temperature remains the same, if oxygen is reintroduced, the fire will reignite and it will continue burning, just like it would in real life. Wow. That's impressive, man. These guys, they really did their research. Man, <laughs> the game is going to get interesting once you get this in the PU, man. So what's next for this? So our focus has been on interiors, in particular spaceships, but all interior spaces really, and this voxel grid really helps us solve that problem. Our next focus is going to be on planets. Obviously, they represent a slightly different challenge, the vastness of them. We have to transfer this over the network and simulate it slightly differently. Uh, and we also have to render it at scale. But the, the way we've done it, the, the, the core tech we've used, we should be able to scale this up quite easily. So that's, that's going to be our next focus. OK, so how do we create realistic dynamic fire visuals in Star Engine? Well, we start with the simulation, as just described by Ali. And this gives us the data we need to drive the visuals. 
Then we bring in the burn shader. So this can be applied to static environments, and we have a lightweight version of the shader for entities, which is kind of based on the, um, the dirt shader and where. Then we've got the glow, which is an animated surface decal shader for static environments. This is where we get, start to bring in some nice motion. And then we bring in the GPU particles, which are spawning from voxels and in screen space. Obviously, these are doing a lot of the work visually. Then we bring in the lights. These are spawned for clusters of voxels as opposed to per voxel as an optimization, a cluster being a representation of voxels close to each other. And then we bring in the fog. So this is height laid volumetric fog. The smoke fills the room and it goes up to the ceiling before filling the rest. And we're simulating that. That's crazy, man. So to finish, we're going to take a look at all of that put together in the game. Thank you. This looks so good. Man. There is no other game that's simulating fire like this. Fire gameplay. That's interesting. Man. This is one of the things I'm really excited about. Not sure how soon we'll get this because it seems like the next step is to actually get it into, um, to work through into the PU. Um, like, like they mentioned, they need to get it, uh, um, see how they can get it over to, over in the network to see how it translates over. So I guess that's their next um, step. And so I'm really, I'm hoping that this goes well, that we, this way we can get access to it as soon as possible. It may drop with engineering gameplay, I hope, because fire should be, it should be a part of it. So um, uh, it's something that I'm definitely looking forward to.